Welcome back to the channel. Hey all doing, I'm Nigel from the Norfolk Fishing Channel. Today I'm out really early, it's half past four. I'm travelling really light, I've got one rod, feeder rod. And I'll talk you through all that in a minute. I've just come down to a place, been checking out. Um, come back down last night, I put a bit of pre-bait in, just mainly hemp and casters. Uh, it's a little backwater. I'm not going to tell you, it's on the River Wenson, but today I'm just targeting chub and possibly maybe a barbel if you're very lucky. I've heard half a dozen people talking about it now. Um, they're on the return and I've heard a few catch reports but never seen pictures anywhere. I don't think you're going to get it on Facebook or YouTube. Um, but apparently they're here. But if we get one, we get one. It's, it's a lot of and horse, you know. They're like unicorns, so. But I've come down here, I've got some fast water to my left. I've got a nice long glide, I'll show you in a minute. I've got a nice gravel run in front of me here. And I've come down the last sort of like five years or so, and this is just silty and muddy and weedy. And I don't think it's because of all the rain we've had over the last year and a half and that, and the heavy floods and They've opened foot way further upstream, they've opened some lock gates up and it looks like it's flushed and scoured the whole river out and we're back down to clean gravel. Um, but on, on the opposite me, we've got a nice big bush with some cut underhangs that I get into. And, um, what I did is, when I first came down here, I got a bed of bait down first. Just mainly hemp. I put about five or six catapults of hemp in. Not big catapults, they're only the, like, the match ones. About three, four of casters, two of two mils, and about literally six grains of corn, and that's it. And then I've just got busy setting up. Um, so, my rod, I've got a two ounce carbon tip in it. It's my MIDI IM2 method feeder rod. It's got a uh, I've got the uh, Mitchell Abisat Gold 3 bait runner 4000 uh, that's 10 pound Maxima line down to 8 pound hook link that's the Shimano Technium hook link and it's got on a really simple running leg rig all, all the way through just, I've got two ounce lead. I don't want to put any feeders or anything in. I just want a straight lead. I've measured it out. I've got about 15, 16 inch hook link. I've got a size 10 Camazon animal hook. Hair rigged a band on there. And there's just a little 8 mil wafter. But what I'm going to do is, I've got some of the stinky blue cheese paste. And I made some more paste up yesterday. That's just uh, four slices of bread, crust cut off, and then I just dice it into small cubes. There's a big chunk of um, naduja, or whatever you call it, enduja, sort of like spicy Italian pork, um, which I cut really fine, put in with the bread. There's some blue cheese in there, and there's about a teaspoon of chili oil, smoked paprika cayenne pepper, a good pinch of salt and some cracked black pepper and there's some, uh, I put about a dessert spoon of crushed hemp in there and I just moulded it and moulded it and moulded it into a fine paste and right at the end I just really finely diced up some of the enduja and some tiny bit of luncheon meat that I had in the freezer and just mixed that through so, oh, smell that Tell you what, if it didn't have the crushed hemp in it, I'd fry this up at the end of the session and eat it myself. <laughs> God, it's gorgeous. Right. I'm just going to get a, a bit like that. So I'm going to flatten it out. I'm going to mould it round the pellet and the hook. I'm going to flatten it out. But I'm going to make sure the hook point's poking through. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
easier said than done. Bigger pellet, I think. This one's a bit small. The hands are cold, that's why. Try that again. Okay, I'm not going to put it around the hook to uh, just going to put a big blob but around the pellet. Just touching the hook, that makes sense. So like that. So the hook's there. I'm just going to poke that in a bit. It's just showing. Perfect. And you just see the point of the hook. Get that out a little bit more. There we go. Right, mold that on. I'm going to get this flicked out right under this tree. We'll set this drag first. Just gonna hold it just above the lead and then put a little bend in the tip so I can just flick it under arm, hopefully, into that hole. I've got a butt rest down here, a locked in one. I don't think I'm going to put the bait on. I'm just going to Thing. Right. We basically sit and wait for a bite now. There's a bite straight away, bloody hell. So it's mainly put a nice bed of particles down. 80% sort of hemp, really. Some casters. Oh, there's a bite. Literally six bits of corn, just for a bit of colour. Some two mils. Soaked up, so they're nice and soft. There's fish down there. I mean, any chubba barber, that's just going to wang over. Probably hear the uh, bite alarm go. So I've not got the bait runner on. My hand's literally on my 
Rob Butt. Some big fish down there. No, don't want to take me off the road. Thing is, I've got to be straight on it. Can't give them anything. They'll be straight under those trees. Basically, that's all I've got with me today. I've got paste, cassis, hemp, two mils, and some corn. Oh, that's a big butt. You've trembled. You know, that's something knocked into the line there. They look like pectoral fins hitting them out. Okay, we just brought that in. Bands and metal stopped, so just ever so slowly wound in. All the pace is gone, so probably small fish knocking off it, but just put another bit of paste on. But what I'm doing before I cast out, I put another pouch full of hemp in, and I've rolled up about six little balls of the paste and threw them over into the far side just to give them a little taste of a little bit of smell. Wrap some more paste on. Got it back out. You get some big bangs on the tip. Decent fish hitting the line. If it's going to be a chub or a barbel it's just going to fly around because you've got a big mouth, so I've just moved, moved the whole bit of the paste up. I've left the hook completely exposed this time. Put a slightly smaller bit of paste on. The paste is not too soft, but Maybe it's just getting pecked off by a little fish. I don't want to be reeling in and out, casting all the time. I'm going to time the casts. Probably about 10 minutes. And I just tease the I'm not going to rip the lead out of the peg, I'm just going to tease it out, slowly wind it out. I'm underarming it, just trying to plop it in. I'm going to keep the hemp going in. Some food down there, they can grub around on the bottom. Occasionally, I'll start sprinkling a few casters through. I'm not going to go heavy with the bait, so mainly 90% from now on. Hemp. A few casters. Another half an hour, I'll give it a few more two mils and a few bits of corn, just again for the visual thing rather than the feed. I'll keep them crumbling around. I want to put a massive carpet of feed down because I don't think there's that many bigger fish. <sighs> it's freezing this morning. Okay, what I've done is I keep getting sharp, fat little bites. I think they're just small fish picking it off. So I 
tried the sweet core, got not the touch. Went back on the pace, tip flew over, and missed it. So I put on a big size six, quarter sort of curved shank hook, and I moulded a great big piece of meat paste, spicy and doo blue cheese paste, around the hook. I just left the point and the point and then uh, showing quite a bit of the point showing. Moulded a nice big blob around it. Cut a pot with a little bit more hemp in, nothing else. Still getting loads of trembles. Some big ones as well. I know there's fish there. I'm not getting pecked at at the minute with the bigger bit of paste on there. I think it was because it was quite small before. That like little pea sort of shape. A little fish will rag in it. Put a big blob in. You just have to sit and wait. Oh god, it's so cold. My hands are raw. Also, as well, I found not going quite so tight to the far side, it's helping. Just literally in line with where that tree branch is. It's a lot cleaner. There's a bit more flow there. If you go right over, there's loads of twigs and leaves and stuff underneath them branches. This and I've got some just uh, really stinky sort of three four cheese uh, paste. This is a bit of Stilton, Parmesan, mature cheddar, excellent mature cheddar, and garlic oil, again a bit of crushed hemp and bread and that bread mass. It just, it just did well for the chub end of last season. I'm going to make up another hook link because I lost a band on it. I haven't got two done, but I just want to do a few, do a few more. Okay, guys, it's about quarter past five. I've had a play about with a few things, and even the big, big hook in the paste, I waited five, ten minutes. Didn't have any signs on the tip, bought it, and it was gone. Um, I just had on a Changed over to a, a boilie spike. I've got a squid and krill, eight mil boilie on a spike. Put the paste around that. Tied the blue cheese paste. It's, um, it's just getting pecked off, but I've looked around me because it's a really damp morning. There's slugs everywhere, so I just put this size six hook on again, and I've just threaded that through two or three times, like you would sea fishing. And just left the hook point exposed there so I can get the finger in it. I know Chubb love, love slugs, so I'll give this a go. And then I'll just pan you around and you can have a look where we are. I just had an absolute scream of a rum on, a, on the slug, slammed it down, struck into it, missed it. Well, it took me in the, in the tree. Just put another one on and it's been around picking loads of slugs. It didn't take long, it was in about 30 seconds. I've just threaded it on twice, left a lot more hook showing.
You know anyone who uses slugs still? Very old school bait. But it must be used to it dropping off the tree, especially on a damp morning like this when there's, they're everywhere. This morning when I looked down, I just got a good sort of like 12, 15, put them in a little bag. Just put a little bit more hemp in and some two mils. Not too many two mils, just half a pouch. But I'm just putting it upstream of me a little bit. Right, well, we've got the opportunity. Isn't it? I'll quickly show you where we are. If things go quiet, what I'm going to do is see if I can catapult some bait just to where the end of that sort of ripple coming out of the trees are. It looks quite clear there. And then just upstream from here, touch. I'm going to go in here. I can position my seat round. That first slug was in 30 seconds. Bob and flew up. The alarm started screaming. Kept me wanging away. I think you only get a few opportunities in this spook. Okay, you guys, about three absolute slam downs and the alarm screaming off on the slugs. I've just lengthened the hook length a bit. I've put a size 6 curvy mustard hook on. And I've just put the thread of the slug on twice, left loads of hook showing, just cut the end off so I've got a nice chunk. But the bites are just straight now. So it's chub there, but <clears throat> I'm not feeling a lot. I'm not feeling a lot. I'm not even putting sweet corn through now. Just hemp and casters. I'm just rolling a few little tiny balls of meat paint. And just plopping them in, three or four at a time, not every cast. I've got so many bites, so many bites. I missed every one of them. I know there's a lot of small fish there, we keep taking the pace. You can just see the tip jump 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 peck 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 pecking it off. Even though I put it around a boil or a pellet or something. Now I haven't used slugs for God knows how many years. I just saw there's still thousands around them They're everywhere this morning. So I've got about 15, 20 from the bag. Literally, say first cast in 30 seconds and the tip went flying round. I should have hit that one. I should have hit that one. Nearly took the rod off the rest. And what I've been doing as well, getting a few, just chopping them up into little pieces, two or three bits, and throwing them in. Just as the teaser.
bag full of slugs. <laughs> Cheap and free. It used to be used all the time and I don't hear anyone using it anymore. I'm going to say summertime, they're all on the trees and the leaves and that and fall in and chubbers come up and pick them off or when they get washed into the river. And they're really rough, uh, rubbery as well, they're really tough and rubbery. So you need to make sure there's plenty of hook. Because I was getting a couple of knock 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 knock. I know there's little fish, but they just can't they can't take it off. Tough as old boots. It's going a bit quiet now, but. I had two or three slam downs in a row and I think that's probably just spooked him for a bit so I'm just going to sit and wait now. <clears throat> a little bit of knock on there. Never get a bite when you turn the camera on. I'm not with a bait runner on. Well, the reels hit you some my hand here. So I can just straight in, put the butt rest. This is a cart blocked in one. Just going to roll a couple of balls of meat paste. Pea sized ones, a bit bigger. Oh, it smells gorgeous. You can see the chili flakes and the hemp. Just throwing them slightly upstream, just the left of that little bush bit. I can see them going down and settling in the peg where I've got my bait. Just about there.
Just gonna get this a tweak. Just to hopefully get that slug to flutter a bit. Just plucking it, I'm not going to reel in it in or anything. A little knock there. I'm just wondering if they're starting to get a little bit full up now. <clears throat> they might just start plopping in a few different areas. Hey guys, it's gone a little bit quiet. Still getting the trembles and knots, but um, <clears throat> I thought now's a good time to sort of have a little bit of a rethink and a re-rig. So I've taken, I thought the two ounce was probably a bit too much. I now haven't got a lot of bombs with me, so I'm making up a a link ledger, same system, but I've just tied eight pound line, a loop, so I can go around the clip, put three or four turns and a little loop and a knot at the end, and I've just put two SSG on there, two swan shot, so that's sliding on the link. I took the links uh, clip off and put one of the barrel swivels on. I've got the same system, I've got a 10 mil wafter, so hopefully that'll just create a bit of buoyancy in the rig, not, well, it's not going to float it or anything, but um, and it's going to mould a bit of paste around it like that, see if that makes any difference. If um, if the two spawn shots not holding, I can just add a few more shots until it holds. That cast a lot better as well. It's gone in with a lovely little plop. Right under the tree, that one. That might just create a little less resistance and it's holding, that two SSC is holding. There's a knock straight away and another one. Ooh, 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 ooh. That wasn't quite a strike but it was a good pull down. But I think they're just, as I say, pecking the, uh, well, where'd that go? <laughs> well, it's definitely working a lot better, I think. Right. And what I've done as well, I've put the rod tip a lot further down. I could probably uh, put it even further down still by the look of it.
Oh, it's not again. I'm going to put this tip right, right as far down as I can get it, conventional style if I can. I'll try to put less paste on it as well, as little as I possibly can. Just so I've got more hook showing as well. Not quite enough on there. I'm going to make sure that pellet's right in the middle. Well, that's absolutely bloody loving this paste, this area. I'm going to push this. If not, this right down. That's a bit of a hard bit there. I'm going to miss going stone or something. No. That's it. That's better. That's better. Lift it butt, butt rest up as well. It goes in with such a nice little cloth. I'm going to put this on my knee, I think. Too far down now. Needs to be up a touch. Better. That's the best it's been all day. Normally, I wouldn't be able to see them on the pace. They've just been pluck, 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 pluck with the two ounce bomb, but with the two SSG. Doing me. Mm. Okay, guys, sun's getting up a bit now, and I think that my window of opportunity to catch is passing. I'm going to have a little bit of play around. I've just added another SSG because it was just trundling through the peg a little bit too much for my liking. It's just holding up a little bit more. But it's alright if you had lunch and meat or something you want to trundle it through. And it might be worth just taking one off and playing if I want. So I'm casting it out to the same spot underneath. And it's nicely trundling down under the branches, but I don't want to get too far under there in case it do catch something. But rather than lose feeding, I want to get the sort of like feed down on the deck. So I was having a think, and what I've done is the two mils. Miss that one. I've mixed with a couple of handfuls of hemp. So 
bit literally I can squeeze it into a ground bait or into another and get that down on the deck but I took out a few four mils first and mixed it with some of the meat paste they've got a nice fishy fish meal paste as well so you can always try that It is quite soft, but uh, I'm still getting the bites. None of the slam downs. But I've got about four hook links here, all baited, ready to go, different bits and pieces. So it's just a case of taking this one off, grabbing another one. I might try another couple of big worms or something in a minute. I've got maggots, but I don't want to use them because I know I'm just going to get little fish. Let's get this cast straight in. I'll pop it under the tree. That is, that is moving down, but it's holding. But I might just put another SSG on there. I don't want to go too mad. I will still be loose feeding because I want a bit of sound. And those pellets and hemp will quickly break up on the bottom. The good thing about this peg is where I am, I know the chub are going to be lurking away in the dark water underneath this tree here. This is doing me every time. Probably another perch. Oh, I don't know. What is this? 
Is that what a bloody well think it is? It didn't look like a chub. Is that what I think it is? Oh my god. All morning I've been trying pellets, paste. I've gone on worm. You never guess what I've caught. I've caught a bloody unicorn from the Wenson then. A barbel. He ain't big. He's not big. That's why I'm not telling you where I am. Oh, he's wily. I just knew the way that was flying upstream. Let's get that hook out. I don't believe it. I haven't caught one of these in 15 years. Let's get that weed off him. Steady fella. Steady. You are going to be a TV star. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Went some barbel. We're back. Let's get this rested and we'll get it in the net. Woohoo! <laughs> Rock and all shit does exist. Barbel from the Wenson. Okay guys, I'm out on the lovely little stretch of the Wenson. I've been pacing this place up and down and I've cleared a space with a rake the last couple of days. I like the picked here because after all these floods of the last year, this has been scoured out. And I've heard some rumours of barbel back in the Wensum. I've never seen any pictures of anything. I've stuck out all morning with pellets and paste, nothing. I've just put a great big lobworm on underneath the bush. It's not, it's not big. It's only a baby. A barbel from the Wensum. Great big lobworm right underneath the trees in the dark. Let's get this gently slipped back. I'm going to let this fully rest, fully recover. I've got my wellies on. Hold on, let me just get you right, guys. Let me just get you right. Oh, I need to turn. Well, I don't believe that, guys. My first barbel in about 15 years out the Wenson. Maybe even more than that. About 18 years. Just my book, please, guys. It's not my biggest one, but a long way. I can't tell you where I am. I'm outside in Orange little stretch I've had my eye on been walking the river just found this place it's been nicely scoured out back to gravel I came down yesterday late evening made sure there was no one around and uh, brought my rake with me again spent it wasn't too bad. An hour and a half, an hour and three quarters, raking it out, making it nice and clean. But where I am, you can see, I'll show you, the gravel, and there's a nice sand bar that goes along my stretch here before shallowing up. 
goes quite deep under the trees. I've cleaned it all out. But you, I don't know where all this gravel's come from. I say, I think with all the heavy rains and floods we've had and over the last year and a half, um, somewhere along the river, <clears throat> I know further down towards Helston and other areas have opened up sluice gates and they're quite, they're quite wide open and it's flushing the river out. You pay where I am, you've seen all the clean gravel pretty much all the way out. It runs along here. This is all nice clean gravel. Even if we get a bomb and drag it back up to the bush there. That's all clean gravel along here. And then there's some reeds down to my right. And uh, all these trees. Nice deep underhang. And there's a flow from the far side, run underneath these trees and out towards at the end of the bushes. But there's two or three pegs along here. But the water's crystal clear at the minute. Stony, gravelly, I haven't seen any of them that here for years and years and years. I was just thinking, I forgot to bloody get a picture, didn't I, of the barbel? I'll be able to do a still shot from the video. But I've just lost, I've just lost a really big fish. A really big fish. Powerful. I don't know what it was. I've just cast it downstream, right to that fallen tree. There's a little longer hang. I can get just swing it underneath if I'm careful with a big piece of worm. And I just saw the tip, just, it didn't rattle. It didn't, wasn't a violent pull uh, the yank down it just slowly arced over and I thought I thought it was a piece of debris or a tree or something and I struck into it and it was powerful I think it was a really big chub I think it was a really big chub I pulled out of it I had it on for about 20, 20 seconds just couldn't get it out underneath the trees Damn you. But I'm keeping to the same philosophy. I'm just feeding 90% hemp. And started feeding it. There's two gaps. There's right in front of me. And I know that's going to drift down underneath them trees. And to the left, that's sinking down and putting it in that hole there. And then every sort of like 20 minutes, a handful of casters. And every sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, some of the two mills into a ball with some hemp and straight down in the middle there in that hole because that will go down and break up and wash but the worms are doing good business at the minute at least I can see the bites I'm hooking fish that was a big fish that was a big fish it's right underneath that tree and the rod tip just lurched down towards the water I struck to the left because I said I thought it was a debris or a tree or something and then it just started kicking back but it didn't belt, bolt off like a barbel it was more of a slow methodic pull jag 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 it wasn't a perch it felt definitely like a chub just head thumping away but they're right underneath the bushes they're right underneath you've got to get as close as you can I'm sorry about the sun glare, there's not a lot I can do about it. Yeah, well I'm done guys, it's gone a bit finicky for a while, so I put some more hemp in and a few casters. And uh, <clears throat> still getting the bites on the worm, but just a little jig, 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 jag, jag. So after that big fish, I've got the 15 mil cell boiling, and I put that on, but what I've done is I've trimmed it down to sort of like that. 10, 12 mil, just cut the corners off or cut the edges off the circle, made it a bit more barrel shaped. And I'm just going to give that 15 minutes 
just to let the peg settle so I'm not in and out of the lead all the time. And I've just literally cast it right underneath that tree, right in front of me. And so we're going to sit and wait, see if the tip flies round. So it's getting out really hot now. And that's about the darkest place, coolest place. I've started bunging some more bait to my left, right underneath the tree. It's a little underhand cut. You can just skirt it underneath, just underarm swinging it. I'm just having a play about, keep swapping and changing. Cheese paste, meat paste, or the spice in a doja paste, whatever you call it, and doja. chilli and garlic in there, the worms. But I knew it was going to be a scorching hot day and if there are any decent fish like that lost that big chub they're going to be right underneath the bushes. So it's going to be hit and hold I've started picking up the catapult. I've been throwing it because it's easy throwable out there. But I've been using the catapult so I can shoot the bait right underneath. And then obviously a little sun by hand, a little bit short because <clears throat> I won't be able to get right underneath. But if I can just tease them out a little bit. Thoughts uh, take my jumps off as happening boiling. I put that over my bait tub, all my bait in the tub. I'm trying to keep it as cool as possible out of the sun. I've got a selection of pellets and boilies, but there's nothing really. I think about eight mils, about the biggest I've got really. So, but they're only sort of like match match boilies and pellets and got a couple of eight mils I might try the eight mil on its own in fact I'm probably going to do that actually we've got a couple of the trout pellets a big eight mil I've got four identical sort of hook lengths in there, all eight pound line. I've got one with a straight size six Kirby Mustad hook. That's for hooking uh, slugs. Don't try to come it in half. I, I cut one in half. Yeah, they're just a mess inside. <laughs> Another one, one with a boily spike. One with just a straight hook and one with a band. So I'm going to swap my change. The only thing I didn't bring, and I thought about it last night, I need to get myself um, your baiting needle. Forgot to bring a baiting needle. So I can hair rig some stuff. And some couple of little stops, but I, you know, always use a little bit of a twig or a bit of a leaf or something. movement on the tip, mind you, with the boil you don't expect it to fly around. Okay guys, it's got up to 10 o'clock, it's gone a bit quiet but yeah, you'd expect that now. So it's just sticking to the same principles, but what I've done is I've put an 8mm pellet on, the biggest one I can find, with a small band so it's nice and tight, and just cast it under the tree. I'm not getting any silly little rattles and clucks at it. If I put the paste on, I know it's a small fish digging away at the paste. So I'm going to sit and wait for a slam round with that. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I bought. You should always, when it's like this, got a bottle of juice, 
put it in the freezer last night, took it out this morning, put it in a plastic bag, still ice inside. Oh man, that's good. Oh. Ice cold. See there's still a block of ice in it. Oh. Might just leave that out a bit because I uh, <laughs> ain't got much left to drink. Come on, defrost. You know, I was thinking last night. Should we call this a quest for Barbel or not? And I thought, nah, I'm not going to. It's just about going out and catching a fish. I didn't want to sort of like jinx any chances. And I don't know what it is, as soon as I put out quest for bass, quest for tench, or whatever, quest for this, there's several channels come along shortly afterwards and uh, sort of copy what I'm doing. Bass quest and roach quest and stuff like that. Which I don't mind. Take it as a compliment. Must be doing something right. So people want to copy you. Let's uh, take that as a compliment all day long. I'm obviously uh, getting the formula right. And people want to watch the videos and copy what you're doing, which is good. You know, it's all about learning, and that's what I'm here for to sort of like try and teach you guys some uh, tricks and tricks. <laughs> tricks and tricks. Can't even bloody get the word out. <laughs> teach you guys some tricks and tips. <clears throat> They're just about enjoying it. Yeah. Enjoy what you're doing. <clears throat> Work hard at it. Put a bit of effort into it. Do a bit of homework. And I'm not knocking any sort of carpers or anything like that, but people who get into fishing and go straight into the carp world and just by the rods and arms and boilies and that. And you will catch. You know. But then they come to a river and somewhere else and they, and they struggle and I think any 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 fishing you get into is it's imperative really to understand your quarry. Understand fish behaviour. And that, you know, goes from just sitting by the river, sitting behind the a decent match angler just coming down your local river with a small whip or small float and just chucking bank you don't necessarily fishing just chuck some bait in the maggots a bit of bread and just watch how fish respond and how they initially back away when you chuck bait in it spooks them and then all the little ones come in and they go cra crazy like a pack of piranhas and then they you feed them off and then the bigger fish will start to turn up after that. And that's when you, you know, when you're out in intimate rivers and streams, it's just a gentle trickle, little and often approach is normally the best because what you're trying to do is, initially for the first hour or two, you're trying to gain interest into the peg. You don't want to overfeed it. If you come and blast a load of bait in, Fish are just going to gorge themselves, you get stupid fast lightning bat bites you can't strike at. As I say, initially you'll get all the juvenile fish to come in and they'll just go crazy and they'll just spoil your peg and they'll eat everything and then just disappear. But if you just keep trickling the bait in, trickling the bait in, the little ones will get the fill, then the medium sized fish will come in, they'll have their fill, and then it just Constantly like building the confidence of the peg up and then the, later on Later on in the day they're normally the last hour or two the bigger ones come in 
And you want to get as well, it's peg management like I was talking about the other day on the Bjorg, getting the most out of your swim all day long. If you come in and blast handfuls of baiting and pouches and pouches of bait into a small river or stream, canal or whatever, <clears throat> you'll catch probably for the first hour, half an hour, and then it'll just go dead and you won't catch for the rest of the day. Because as soon as that bait's gone in, once the fish have had the fill and they bugger off and that bait's just sat on the bottom, it's a kiss of death. A kiss of death for any swim. So it's just about nurturing the peg and nurturing your swim all day long and responding to the bites. Keep tinkering and changing. Step up the feed if you're getting the bites and then just analyse it. How do the fish respond? Oh, I'll stop getting bites. If, it's, if you're getting bites quicker, then yeah, you can step up the feed. But it, you know, if you start piling the bait and the fish back off, you don't get any bites. Cut back again. You're just uh, you know, you're switching and changing and trying different things. And at the minute, it's been in about 10 minutes now. I'm not out of touch. So I'm thinking, <clears throat> I know the fish are still there. So I'll give it a little bit more feed, a little bit more hemp. I'm not going to feed any caster this time, just hemp only. And then I'm going to put a bit of paste around it and we'll see how that, if it brings a response or not. We've done it guys, we've done it. We've got a barbel. Size of that one, it's only a baby. <laughs> well, it's a miniature barbel. Old Gary the Gudgeon, look. He's got barbels. I'll take, I'll take that, it's half a barbel. I just thought I'd have a five, ten minutes. Put on um, same hook link, same, same size ten hook, four or five maggots. I just have a thought, whatever. <clears throat> Mess about. Might just try caster in a minute. I'm going to do that now. If I have one more go on the maggot, they're all good. Have another go on the caster. Half. Tightening up a lot more as well. There you go. going to get ragged by little ones. We'll try the caster. Three of the maggots are gone. But what I thought I'd do in a minute, I'd have a look through the box. I'm going to sit and wait, put the 15ml cell boilie on. What would be good here, I think, if, if you could come down here with some, like, 12, 15 mil halibut pellets. They work a treat. Let's 
say about three, three casters on, maybe four. And we'll go through, and we'll get this out. Well, nothing on the pellet, so I did what I said I was going to do. Put the paste on, but just sharp little rattles. Give it five minutes or so. Pour it in. Paste is gone again. But just put the worm back on. This is definitely a gudgeon this time. <laughs> Another little Gary the gudgeon. I love these fish, but their big cousins are here. Hey, it's good. Okay guys, get get loads of sharp fast bites on the caster but I couldn't hit him so I thought ah, oh, I've got some worms with me, I put a great big chunky lob worm on, just cast it out. Stay still fella, stay still, he's lively. Right in the corner of its mouth. Nicely hooked. Stay still. Beautiful perch. Look at that. Tell you what, it goes well in this flow. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful fish. We'll get it back. Hey guys, this is in two seconds. Same place, right underneath them bushes. Got two peas in a pod. Slightly smaller than this one. He's taking the hook well down. I did away with the uh, nasty bite along. Well, I can't read the bites with that thing. I think it's a bit too sensitive. Be right like if you want boily or something like that, or big pellet. Come on, open your mouth. I can see it all. There we go. It's just on his tongue bit. There we go. Never know, I put on the worm. Right, we'll get another worm on. You never know. Get a nice big fat worm. Snip the head off. Get that out there, I'll kill the rest of them. And then I'm going to just thread it round. Push it through. Come on, don't you back up. That's it. Keep pushing that, pushing it. Just like that. Plenty of hook showing. Get that back out, right underneath that tree. I've got the uh, alarm on, but I'm not using the bobbin. Just, I'd rather just read the tip. Oh, bite straight away. And again. Okay, it's just gone half ten. I just cast the left underneath that tree, but got snagged on something solid. So I just kept a bit of gentle pressure on, kept pulling the rod back straight, and I just I just broke the hook limb. That's all I lost, a bit of half a hook length, my hook. So I thought, uh, now's a good opportunity, sorry. But now's a good opportunity to, um... Yeah, I missed that. 
go a little bit lighter. So I've put a six pound hook link on. I've gone a slightly bit longer, it's probably about two foot, and a size 12 cameras and B520. And it's getting bites all the time now. Just going that finer diameter. Still enough worm on there. I just found a lighter bomb. It's about one ounce. Is. It's perfect. I might as well just keep plugging away at this. If I get gudgeon and little roach and perch, that's, that's fine. Might be a chance of a chub, you never know. Might even be a chance of another little barbell, you never know. I'm just going to stick with this for the sort of like last hour. I'm going to leave it to about half eleven, it's getting too hot now. So I'll keep plugging away. The fish is still there. I'll just cut back with feed a bit. It's just, I've just put... Um, two handfuls of casters in, well not handfuls but a couple of dozen rattle 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 on the tip all the time, bang 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 bang. I know it's just gudging and stuff rattling it. Yeah. It's the name of the game. Well, I'm keeping the bites coming all day long. It's not like yesterday where it just switched off completely. It's not really strikeable, it's just did -did 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 pecking at the worm all the time. Yeah, we'll carry on with this for the sort of like last hour. And if there's catch anything, I'll get back to you. Never go, Jim. Alright, snap on the whole worm. Alright. Now go and tell your big cousin, I'm over here. Off you go, fella. And another good gin. Worm tip with a white maggot. I've got a, literally a couple of scabby maggots. Most of them turn into casters. But sort of like picked out a few, a little handful. I've chopped it well upstream. So they come down, float underneath the bush and hopefully to my peg. Uh, I'm going to give it another 20 minutes. I think the peg's starting to die a bit now, so is everything else. The worms are getting a bit too warm. I'm running out of juice. I've got a bit of ice left. I'm going to be dying in a minute if I get any hotter. I've just caught the tiniest little minnow. <laughs> Tiny minnow. So, 20 minutes and, and that, that'll be it. So unless I get anything substantial, I might as well sign off now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any comments, drop them below. Obviously, um, don't ask for locations or anything like that. I won't, I won't be telling you. <laughs> or anywhere near. It's just a Wensum, okay? So, you'd have to put the homework in yourself, I'm afraid. And it's just not fair. Um, you know, there's not many of them here, the juveniles. I know people come fishing them with carp gear and boilies and massive pellets, but there might be five or six pounders here. One second, guys, I'm just going to cast this out. But I mean, it would be good to come here for an overnight session. But it's quiet, I haven't seen one single person all day long. Not one person. Um, so it would probably be worth an overnight. Oh, I'm way out of the way. It's a good 10 15 minutes from where I park the car. Good 15 minutes. I'm in a nice secluded little area.
Ooh, our first roach of the day. Bang on cue. Oh, it's a dace. Beautiful. Scale perfect. First dace of the day. Let's get this unhooked. Yeah, so um, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Any comments and that? If you want to know any tips or tricks or anything, just let me know. Tight lines, all the best guys. And I'll see you in another video. Unless I catch another fish. <laughs> Cheerio. Well, I was just thinking, guys, this, <clears throat> before that, I've just seen this huge bird fly out the tree. I don't know what it was. Definitely weren't a cormorant, a heron, or anything like that. It was like dark grey black, really thick set, big head, huge beak. I mean, I thought it was an eagle, but we weren't an owl. We didn't have a flat face. Strange. I've never seen that one of them before, wherever it is. I mean, it was massive. But what I was thinking is, years and years ago, when I first got to Norwich, I mean, I moved down from Nottingham, I used to fish to Trent all the time, I used to have barbel all the time. I used to catch, you know, barbel on the feeder, and it's the big approach these days, but I always found I used to catch more barbel on the stick flow. And when I first moved to Norwich, I used to fish Helston Mill, that's where it was clean, and loads of gravel and not silted and weeded up when there used to be a good head of barbel in there. And I never caught one on the feeder. Kept one catch big chub on the feeder. <laughs> there used to be a gravel run on the inside. And I used to put my chest waders on and stand in there with a, a stick float. I'm going to have to pull my rod in a minute. So people coming on canoes. And you put, put, um, put sort of a four, four BB stick float bolt down with an Avon rod and centre pin reel and just trot it down the river and uh, I used to have no end of barbel a little you know biggest one was about three pounds but uh, anything from like 12 12 ounces up to three pound before they started to disappear one second just pull this in you all right let me just put put this down for you Yeah, so next time I come back, I shall bring a little float rod with me, stick floats, and centre pin reel. Alright, hook it up. And I'll show you where I mean. I can plumb up in this hole where I've been fishing the feeder. And then just skirt the stick float literally down the edge of these uh, bushes all the way down. Just trot the bottom, get some like six, eight mil bits of uh, luncheon meat, plenty of hemp and casters. Just trickle the bait in and, and trot a float through. So I always find you do better for the smaller barbel on a stick float and little cubes of meat or casters. Yeah, so that's the plan. Okay, this is getting a bit embarrassing now, but I've just hooked something. And I think this is a very, very juvenile barbel. It's not a minnow. It's not the right colour or shape. It's not a dace, because it's got like a... I don't know if you can see this. It's got a few barbels underneath. And look at the dorsal fin and the tail, shape of the tail. Oh, where are we at? That is a very... It's not a chub. It's in the mouth. It's an upturned mouth. I think that is a very juvenile barbel. And looking at the anal fin and the dorsal fin and the pointed tail and I'll get this little fella back probably one for the future off you go fella
There he goes. Now he's in the water, you can see he's a barbel, look at his fins. Almost shark like. He's eating everything off the side of this little rock here. Rubbing away. There's a couple of them down there, look. A few more down there. Go on fella, off you go. There's another one out there as well. Good sign. Tight lines, all the best guys. And I'll see you in another video. Unless I catch another fish. <laughs> Cheerio.